Parshas Bahar B'chukotai. Okay, so our parsha this week begins with the laws of Shemitah. And if, I don't know how many of you are aware of this, but this coming year is going to be Shemitah year, which has me enormously excited. I love Shemitah. So what's Shemitah about? As the Torah mandates, every seven years we have to leave the land fallow, which is a word that we use almost as often as we use the word phylacteries, I'm sure. Okay, and uh, my other favorite word is, is um, firmament, but whatever. Fallow means that we don't plant, we don't, um, we don't harvest. On a practical level, it affects us here in Israel. The food comes from different sources. Um, you have to have endorsements for Shemitah, just like normally you have endorsements for Kashrut. But even in your own life, in your home, those of us who have house plants, there are different laws that we have to keep. I want to tell you why it gives me so much joy. Okay, the earth itself obviously is um, the most earthy of all possible places. When you say the word earth and you say the word heaven, oftentimes they're used by people to mean two parallel opposites. The earth is finite, the heavens are infinite, the earth has to do with physical activity. When you say heavenly or spiritual, you're talking about eternal, spiritual, transcendental activity. As Jews, we believe that the world is potentially holy. And that's really what it's all about. But normally, um, again, those of us who aren't agricultural, and I can't imagine very many of the people who are listening to this are agricultural, we live in a, in a context in which things that grow from the earth come to us prepackaged and very distant from its source. But the source of almost all of our physical reality is the earth itself. Um, from that perspective, since we're so involved in physicality, we can get lost in it. It's easy to get lost. Um, when you get lost in physicality, the way it looks is that the word real means everything that's transient, and vague means everything that's eternal. So in other religions, the way they deal with this is by saying, the earth is the enemy, and the heavens are where your heart should be. In Judaism, we say no, 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 louder than you could imagine. No. The earth was created to be the agent of our spiritual expression. This is especially true in Eretz Israel. Hashem chose us to define ourselves as a nation, specifically in a land. So, what is, what's the message of Shemitah? Let's look at the numbers 6 and 7. Everything physical has six sides, the four sides and, and up and down. If you take a dot and you move it in all directions, you get six possibilities. Okay, the surface of reality is, is symbolized by the number six. And if you look at the word six, which in Hebrew is shesh, you see two shins, right? This is sort of like what shins look like, and six crowns. Okay, so six... The word six is six, is exactly the picture of six. What seven? So as soon as you could talk about six equaling surface, as soon as you talk about something having a surface, it also has an inside. Seven is the number that symbolizes the inside, the inner reality that gives something purpose, the part you don't see. How important is that? That's what makes something real and eternal. So by letting go of your process, earning it, spending it, spending it, earning it, one year out of seven, which is what people did in, when the society was agricultural and what we commemorate now. You've come to terms with this, that there's an inside, and the inside is greater than the outside and more purposeful. It also attunes you to the divine providence that's specific to Eretz Yisrael. Okay, years and years ago, this happened to us. We were living in the north, and in the moshev that we lived, there was a, a, another moshev near us that was completely secular, that didn't keep Shemitah in any way, shape, or form. 
And um, the Arabs who worked for them at harvest time, they did flowers, asked the secretary of the Moshev to move their, move their resources for this coming year, the Shemitah year, into, into something else, not flowers. And um, the man refused. They weren't set up for something else. Didn't even know exactly why the head of the Arab clan was making this request. And uh, that year, they planted. At first, the rains were very late in coming. They lost their first crop. Then the rains were torrential after they had replanted. All of the seeds were swept downhill to the valley, which actually belonged to the Arabs. They lost everything. Now, here's the part that's relevant. They asked the, Arab, the head of the Arab clan, why did, you know, why did you tell us this? How did you know? He said, don't you know, for Jews, nothing really grows well in the seventh year in Israel. He thought it was self-understood. Now, in fact, the promise that this is how it will be is dependent on many factors on our collective level, but it's something that even people who are very far could see, at least to some degree. So it opens you to the idea of this, that there's inner reality, and your access to it is experiential instead of intellectual. So even those of you who aren't in a position to keep Shemitah in any way, shape, or form, after all, in Los Angeles or Lakewood, what kind of Shemitah do you have? Okay, know it, learn it, so that you could move it from at least your mind to your heart, if not to your actions. Have a marvelous Shemitah.